Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this section of videos we're going to be talking as, about functions and particularly functions as a special type of relations, a special type of binary relation really. And to start off, uh, this first video is going to be a lot of definitions, the definition of what a function is, as well as the definitions of a lot of the different terminology that we're going to use when we're talking about functions. So first, a function, or sometimes we say mapping, f from a set s to a set t is a special rule that associates one element of t to each element of s. In other words, a function is a relation where every element of s appears in exactly one ordered pair st. So let's have an example. If I have this set s, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, and I have a set t, let's say t is equal to 2, 4, 7, 9, and I have this f, and I'll write this f in our set notation. This f is my special relation we're talking about. If this f is defined by 1, 2, 2, 7, 3, 4, oops, well it's clear that f is a relation from s to t. But for f to be a function, our only requirement is that every element of s appears in exactly one ordered pair. So no more than one, no less than one. And here we see that's exactly what we have. My s is 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, and 3 all appear in exactly one ordered pair defined by this relation f. So f, in this example, would satisfy our criteria for a function. Right? That's the only distinguishable difference between a function and a relation. A function has this special requirement to use each element of s exactly once in a, a relation. So let's learn look about look at oh, sorry. Let's look at some other terminology. Uh, s is called the domain of f and t is called the codomain of f. Now as a relation, if we write it the same way we've been writing it, we would write that f is a subset of s cross t. But instead, for functions, we use a special notation and we define a function f from s to t in this way, with f followed by a colon and then s arrow to t. That means it's a function from s to t, uh, opposed to just a, a regular relation from s to t. And instead of writing an ordered pair s t as an element of the relation f, we will write f of s equals t. So the relation on s equals t. This is well defined because we're going to use each s only once here. Now some other terminology. The image of x under f is the value f of x, which is an element of t. So this is for any x in my domain s. We call that the image, or in other words, um, what s is related to is called the image of that s. Now if r is a subset of my domain s, then the image of the entire set r, this f of r, is defined by f of all of the elements in the set r. So it's the set of all the images of the elements in R. And this is called the image of, oh, this says F, this should be the image of R. Now the image of my whole domain, we write that as F of the set S, and that's going to be the image of the set of the images of all of the elements in my domain. We call this the range of F. Now we see by our requirements that the range of F is a subset of T, but it's very important to note that the function defined by f from set to t, uh, from s to t, that does not mean that the image of s, or in other words the range, is equal to the codomain, right? So we have this idea of a codomain up here, and we have this idea of a range here. The range does not necessarily equal the codomain. Now the codomain is always going to include the range. The range will always be a subset of the codomain, but they're not necessarily equal. It's a very important thing to keep in mind. And we can have lots of functions that only map to a part of our codomain. Now the range is the actual, um, the actual values that are mapped to by our function, right? So for an element to be in the range, it needs to be equal to f of s for some s in my domain. And we'll give lots of examples of this later. Um, now we're going to use some notation. Uh, I'll typically use just this kind of d of f and you'll often see some other notation like dom of f, etc. This just means the domain of the function f. 
and we assume that f has already been defined with a particular domain, but when we refer to it, we'll use this notation. And for the range, instead of just using the image of that domain, um, I'll usually use this r of f, but sometimes you'll see this rng of f, or sometimes you'll see ran of f. Any of these notations just mean the range of f. So in other words, the image of whatever domain is used when defining that function. Okay. Now in the next section, we're going to talk about composition of functions. Composition of functions is going to be uh, very closely related to the composition of relations that we looked to in the previous sections. We'll see you there.